Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and it's another day of making some freezer meals. So I am going to cook up this five pounds of sausage that I got. And you know what? I am going to, I'm just going to cut this. I dropped my scissors behind my stove. So I'm going to just like this. Because this is sticky. There we go. Get that all off there. I'm going to cook up this five pounds of sausage because I need to make my dad some um, breakfast burritos. And I also want to do my freezer meals, my pizzas with my Italian bread that I bought for a buck a piece. So that is just gonna be so cheap. I mean, the meal or the bread was a dollar piece. You can feed two people off one loaf, you know, personal size. And so with my, it's about 50 cents, 50 to 60 cents for my, um, pepperoni. That's it. Oh, I hate when you forget words. My pepperoni was 50 to 60 cents. So you know what? With that and the little bit of sausage I'm going to put on it and the handful of cheese and I'm going to use my home canned sauce, it's it's only going to be like two bucks per, per loaf. So, you know, two or two bucks per meal. Sorry about that. So that's what we're going to do. And I got to get this cooked up. And I'm going to break this up. And you know what? I discovered this the other day. I'm probably 20, 20 years behind the times. But I discovered that it works best to break it up with a potato masher. <laughs> I guess. I always say necessity is the mother of all invention. So anyway, we're going to let that start cooking in there. I'm going to get my tater tots because I do need to get those in the oven. Um, I'm also going to do twice baked potatoes and I got bacon to put in the oven. So we're just going to hang out and cook and I'll show you these meals. Okay, so in my oven, I keep my trays. <laughs> Easy access to them. But I only need one. So I'll put the other ones over here. We're going to set our oven to 400. And we're going to get these in there because these are for my uh, breakfast and they're good with tater tots. I'm going to fill my dad's freezer with burritos because that's what he loves. I know my oven isn't quite preheated yet, but these are going in and they'll be fine. We'll get this cut up or broke up and we'll get it cooking. I love my 17 inch skillet. It works so nice because I do a lot of, I do a lot of freezer meals. And it makes it nice because I can do freezer meals for my daughter, for us, for my dad. And just like this, I'm cooking up five pounds of sausage right now. Some of this is going to go on my pizzas because my husband loves sausage and pepperoni. And most of it's going to go into the burritos. And then if I have any left over, I'll just freeze it and use it, you know, for another meal. So it works out pretty good. Okay, I'm going to wrap these in foil. And probably I might be able to put them right back in these bags. I don't know. For the freezer. But anyway, I got all my stuff gathered. My sausage is done. So, we're going to take this out. And I should have got a cutting board on. I think I will. my big board out. Okay? That way I can cut it right here. 
I'm just going to take these and I'm just going to slice them right in half. Those are beautiful looking. Let's get the other one out while we're at it. You know, when I look at that, one half could feed two people with a side salad, you know. So, we might have like four meals in each one. Those are nice. All right, so what I'm going to do with these, that is my own sauce. My tomato sauce here, that's my own, and it's already seasoned for whatever. I've just got all my Italian seasonings right in it. But I am just going to take a little bit of butter, and I'm going to butter these up just a little bit. You could even take these and make these into garlic bread and put away into your freezer. That would be one lovely. That would be wonderful. Come on. Get off there. I make a lot of homemade garlic bread. But these for a dollar, if you don't like the idea of the pizza, you can get them and make them into a beautiful garlic bread with a seasoned garlic spice and some butter and put them right in the freezer. All right. We got these. Okay, we'll put the butter away. All right, so now with that, I'm just going to spread my sauce on these. These are beautiful. And you can see the spices in my sauce, the oregano and parsley. I got a little sweet basil in there, Italian seasoning. I got a little bit of everything in here. And it does make... For a nice pizza sauce. Then I'll just keep the rest in the fridge because next time I go to Meyer, I'll probably get a few more. How nice that works. And my husband loves these. And then my cheese, I don't have the mozzarella. I got the Italian cheese, which has several cheeses in there, including mozzarella. It's got mozzarella, smoked provolone, Asiago, Parmesan, Romano, and Fontana cheese. So there we have that. Now, I'm going to spread these out just a little bit. You know, my daughter would love these too. I should have got a bunch more and made her a few of them up. I'm going to spread my cheese on here. Now, if I was making this for me, I'm not much of a pizza eater. Mm, it, not very often at all. So I make it the way my husband likes it. And when he eats this, I'll probably eat something different. Because really, I know I tell you I eat just about anything. I will eat pizza, but it is not my favorite. Now, I do like garlic bread. But pizza just is not my thing, I guess. So I make these the way he likes them. 
Let's see how we're going to open this one. Oh my goodness, it's childproof. There we go. Okay, we're going to get a bunch of these out. lots of pepperoni he loves sausage on there if I eat pizza I have every vegetable under the Sun on it with real light sauce and extra cheese I, I just love cheese And a lot of times, when I make pizza, I use the salami on it, and not so much the pepperoni. I got a granddaughter, little Miss Stella, hates pepperoni. She'll peel it all off the pizza. But if I make a pizza and put a little bit of salami on there, she loves it. You can go figure. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the difference is in taste. But she don't mind the salami. Get off there. All right, we got that. So now we're going to take a little bit of this sausage. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scoop it out with a spoon because there's not going to be a whole lot going on here. Just a few pieces here and there. And then I'll put a little bit of cheese on top. So it sets it all in. It'll be good. Okay, so now let me wash my hands up real quick. All oh, those look lovely, don't they? Now we're just gonna put a little bit of cheese on the top of this just to hold them all in place. All right, that is it. Those are gorgeous. Absolutely and perfect for the freezer. I'll get all this extra cheese when I wrap them up. Take a look at those, friends. These will be nice all wrapped up.
these done. Now, those are done. I'm going to get ready and get my potatoes. I'm going to do some twice baked potatoes. I'm going to get those in the oven, get these packaged up and put in the freezer. I wonder if I can get these back in here. I bet you I could get two of them. Look at there. Perfect. Get these in the freezer. And then I'll just see you back here when we get ready to do the uh, twice baked potatoes. Take a look at these great big potatoes I got for twice baked potatoes. Beautiful. You could almost do a twice baked potato casserole with this. You know, that might be what I'm going to do. You just put them down in your pan and just fill them and, you know, put them in the oven. Th these are gorgeous. And you know, these potatoes, yes, they were a dollar a piece, but that potato would well more than feed two people a, to a total meal. You know, with a twice baked potato, one potato would do. So that's 50 cents per person for a potato. And then all your other goodies on there, you might have a $2 potato by the time you're done, depending on what you put on it for your twice baked potatoes but you're still gonna have a dollar meal. And a side salad to go with it, you got it. We're gonna wash these up. But I'm going to get them prepped for the oven. And I know some people just, mm, I better need a knife there. Some people just whip them in there, but what's the matter? I thought you were talking to me. Oh, no, <laughs> no. Um, but I get them ready. I like to rub them down with a little olive oil and uh, sprinkle them with a little salt. It gives them kind of a crusty outside and that, that's always nice. So we'll get this all rubbed down beautifully. fit on here pretty good. Okay. You want them all. At least I like them all coated. You can do it any way you want, but I like to have them all coated because it, it does. It gives it a, a crispy out, you know, the, the skin gets a little crispy. And that is, that's good. All right, let me rinse my hands. All right, now we can take some salt, sprinkle the salt. Okay, now these will go in a 350 degree oven for, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you, they're enormous till they're done. How's that? All right. These are all set. I got to poke a few holes in them. Just so that the steam can escape so they don't blow up in your oven. These are going to go in my oven 350 degrees. And I'm saying that these are going to probably go for about 70 70 minutes to about an hour and a half because they are enormous. So when they're done, I'll bring you back. We'll let them cool off and we'll get to making some twice baked potatoes. It is the next day, friends. I have to admit, <laughs> I was wiped. These potatoes took about, about an hour and 15 minutes to cook. 
And uh, I just put them out on my, I let them cool off and then put them out in my sun porch, which is like a walk-in cooler. So they're good. So today we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this made up. These, I can't believe how enormous these are. Now, if you're using smaller potatoes, you're just going to want to cut the tops off. You know, don't cut them in half because then they don't turn out that well. And then the tops are good for making potato skins too. You know, the loaded potato skins. But these are enormous and I'm cutting these in half. Okay. And then we'll take the insides out and we'll make our mix. I got my bacons all done. I baked it in the oven. This is going to be fabulous. You can make a meal with this. These potatoes were like a dollar a piece. This is 10 pounds of potatoes. And I know, $10 for 10 pounds of potatoes, but we're paying it. Anyway, these are huge. And with these, one potato will feed a crowd, I'm telling you. But anyway, one potato, actually... One potato would feed four people stuffed, you know, with a salad and maybe a chicken thigh or a piece of meat. Or you could make one half your whole meal. Beautiful. All right, let me wash my hands up. And we'll get scraping these out. I got my bacon sitting over here so some of that grease gets absorbed. All right. We'll scrape these out and we got to be careful so we don't scrape too much out. So we got to leave a little bit in there. So we'll just run it around like so. I even thought about getting my ice cream scoop out. That might work, too. But as long as you leave enough to make that potato stable, so it holds everything, you'll be good to go. Looks like I got that one. See? Leave a little bit in there and it'll be good. I just go around. I got a thin spot on there, but that's all right. I'm going to get these done. Then we'll get this filling made up. All right. We got them all cleaned and I got them separate. I, I got them on two different trays. I don't want them crammed together. Anyway, it's time to put all our goodies in there. So first I'm going to chop up this bacon because I want this to go inside. I don't save it for the top. I put it right into the potato filling. It's good that way. Some people just, you know, make their potatoes plain. But I like that extra in there. All right, now I just give this a chop. Okay, the bacon's all cut up and in there. 
I'm going to put a stick of butter in here. Nice and soft. It's real soft, so it'll mix up quite well in there. I'm also going to put, and this is for 10 pounds of potatoes. Seems like a lot, but it's 10 pounds. I'm going to put a brick of cream cheese in there. going to start with. Now we're going to start mixing this. Everything's real soft. So we'll mix up beautiful. I'm going to stuff our potatoes. There we go. Now we got to take a little taste of that because I think it might need more salt. The bacon's pretty salty, but we're going to taste it anyway. Just the potato. It's cold, but it needs more salt and pepper. So we're going to go like this. I knew it needed more salt. I want coarse pepper in there. I don't want to grind it all day. I just want it. There we go. Good amount. We'll mix this up. Get that out of there. in the fridge. I don't need any more of that. Get another spoon out. Give this a little taste. Perfect. 
absolutely. And I'm not putting sour cream inside of there because we can put that on top, on top of the cheese. So when I serve it, I'll have the cheese on it and I'll have um, sour cream and some scallions. It'll be wonderful. Okay, this is real easy to fill. I just stuff them full. Just like so. See that? I got a piece that come off in there. We'll glue that together with the potatoes. I'm going to keep these on my tray. And then I'm going to freeze them. But first I'm going to put a little bit. I'll get them to sit together good. Then I'll put a little bit of cheese on them. I might, you know, after I put them in my pans, I'm going to freeze them solid on here. And I might not even put cheese on them until after, you know, until I get ready to cook them up or heat them through. So... Okay, so we've got our pans right here. And I'm gonna put as many in these two pans as I can because these are gonna go to my daughter's in the freezer. in here because I got a another small pan. All right, now these ones will stay here. And that's it. I'm going to put a little parsley on these. Let me just get this one this way. There we go. Just sprinkle a little parsley on top. And 
Okay. Then we're going to put our cheese. And I've got my Mexican cheese, which is... It's uh, Monterey Jack Cheddar Queso Quesadilla and Asiago Asadero Cheese. Something. It's a nice Mexican blend. So we're just going to put the cheese on top of these. these up and when you reheat these you can uh, thaw them out in your fridge or they can go right from the freezer to the oven it really doesn't matter it just takes longer that way but I just turned my oven on 350 and I let them all heat up until they're heated completely through because everything's cooked and then you can take them out of there and uh, put all your extra toppings on them that you like. And they'll be, uh-oh, there we go. That isn't going to work. So they're all packaged and they're all labeled. This will make many beautiful sides for meals, or you can even make a meal out of it. <laughs> so there you have it, friends. I hope you've enjoyed both of the freezer meals that I've done for you today. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.